Over the years, I've had a lot of requests to cover some older TV shows, so I thought a good place to start would be The Master. The Master is a 1984 TV series. The pilot episode, Max, was directed by Robert Klaus. The episode opens with a cool ninja montage and some rockin' disco music. This is 1984, but feeling very 1978. Anyway, the actual episode opens in Illinois, with Max Keller getting thrown out of a window. Max was thrown out because he was defending a couple from a bunch of evil bikers. Yep, bikers just love congregating at the Surf Cafe. Even though he only has a minute, he still manages to wire up every individual bike so they flip. Over in Japan, John Peter McAllister, the only American who would become a ninja. Uh, Joe Armstrong and Sean Davidson would like a word. Wait a minute, McAllister. Home Alone makes so much more sense if you think that he's Kevin's grandfather. Just then, as you would suspect, McAllister is ambushed by ninjas! Lee Van Cleef's stunt double valiantly fights them off. He's leaving Japan to fly to the U.S. to find his long-lost daughter. McAllister then gets a ninja drive-by. Back in Illinois, Max runs into Holly, who's escaping a photo shoot from I Spit on Your Grave. He introduces her to Henry, who is by far my favorite actor in the series. They're then chased by the evil tan car guy. Holly asks him to take her to her father's airport. Oh no, evil car guy is the sheriff! It's the sheriff! What? It's the sheriff! Max then tries to outrun the sheriff. Brace yourself against the dash and don't let Henry fall out. You know it'd be better than that? Putting on your seatbelt! Max manages to run the sheriff off the road, which causes his car to blow up. Holly explains the sheriff tried to rape her. McAllister's taking a truck into town. Holly gets out of her rape clothes and into a flight suit. Max moves in to kiss her, but she reminds him he's Timothy Van Patten and ew! Instead of leaving town after wrecking the sheriff's car, Max decides to stop at the local bar. I sure hope the sheriff doesn't show up and oh, there he is. It's a good thing McAllister is also going to the bar. Wanted to buy you a drink, partner, for bringing Holly back in one piece. Last time he blacked her eye. And nobody did anything? McAllister's talking to the bartender, and this guy launches McAllister's guitar case. The sheriff sees it's full of ninja gear. Max steps in and let the bar brawl begin. Ninja sleep! The sheriff decides to fight with the ninja sword. McAllister then gears up Max. Sure is a good thing, as now he can block the sword. He fights off the sheriff and gets launched out of the bar. Pretty sure being thrown repeatedly through plate glass windows would cause permanent brain damage. McAllister then takes out his aggressions on arcade machines. He then wrecks the bar, and while everyone's stunned, he leaves with Max. McAllister explains the shuriken wound he got while escaping from Japan was preventing him from fighting at full capacity. Max then takes him to the airport. Meanwhile, at Trumbull's airport, Weasley business guy is trying to get Mr. Trumbull to sell. Max talks to Trumbull and Holly. Mr. Christensen is an evil land developer who, of course, wants to plow over the airport and build a shopping center. The sheriff shows up and Trumbull tells him to get out. McAllister's in bad shape. Can't he just do that Mr. Miyagi hand thing on himself? Max talks to McAllister about ninjas. They get through their formal introductions and Max wants to call him the master. Anyway, I'm a cantankerous old man who's lived alone a lot of years. I've been alone, too. What about me, you son of a bitch? Max makes him a deal. He'll help him find his daughter in exchange for teaching him how to be a ninja. McAllister says something to Max that was also said by every girl who shot him down. You got nice qualities. That night, some of Mr. Christensen's goons sabotage the airport. Holly sees the place on fire and tries to stop it by wandering around confused. McAllister smells the smoke and tries to figure out how to use his ninja skills to stop the fire. Holly's using an extinguisher, and an explosion knocks her out. Max sees some stock footage of a fire and heads back to the airport. McAllister comes in and rescues Holly. That is until kaboom! Oh no! Guess I'll have to use my ninja pilot skills to get us out of here. He smashes through the door for an effect that probably cost about half the budget for the episode. Max then almost runs him over. Mr. Christensen is having a party for the shopping center he's going to build. Max then crashes the party, and Christensen has him removed. 
Too bad they didn't throw him out the window this time. McAllister starts Max's ninja training. He gives them a good beating. Ninja failure training montage! While they train the evil ninja Okasa is watching. McAllister's hyper ninja senses kick in. That night they attack the sheriff. I'm pretty sure a ninja wouldn't be wearing a loose chain necklace. The sheriff gets out and McAllister traps him. Oh, this footage was in reverse. Max gets the sheriff to admit on radio that he and his cronies torch the airport. Max has had about five minutes of ninja training, which means he can easily take out three guards. Max takes the elevator up to see Christensen, while the master climbs the building. Wall hack! Inside the technology room where computers were doing things that had to do with technology. This reminds me of Wrath of the Black Mana. Okasa's in pray for death mode. McAllister squares off with Okasa. I had to re-record that line about three times because I kept saying Osaka. Max confronts Christensen and almost gets shot. Max taunts him and then flat out murders him with a throwing star. Hey McAllister, I killed the old man! Max very stupidly attacks Okasa and gets his comeuppance. Then the two ninjas go at it again. You gotta admit, this is some pretty awesome fighting for a corny TV show. The master defeats Okasa but refuses to kill him. Turns out Okasa was one of his students and that's never been done before. Holly told Max McAllister's daughter was in Atlanta. So they go on a ninja road trip. I just checked and going from Illinois to Atlanta is only about 10 hours. They could get there in a day. This is going to be a short series. The van gets buzzed by a plane and, oh right, I forgot, Demi Moore was in this. While what they did was noble, they did threaten to behead the sheriff and murdered the richest guy in the state. At the very least, I think the law would want them for questioning. The Master was a TV series made to take advantage of the ninja craze from the early 80s that started with Cannon's Enter the Ninja. The pilot was directed by Robert Klaus, who directed Enter the Dragon, Black Belt Jones, and many martial arts heavy action films. Klaus's style was very unique in that he was deaf and had assistant directors with him to make sure the actors had correctly delivered their lines. The Master only lasted for one season. Years later, the series was repackaged as Master Ninja, which just edited episodes together to show as a movie. Most folks know it as Master Ninja 1 and 2, which were two fan-favorite episodes of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Since this is a TV series and I have 13 episodes to go through, I'm going to be brief in my behind-the-scenes stuff for the individual episodes, since I'll cover the series as a whole when I get to episode 13. That way I'm not just repeating myself every time. The first episode of Master Ninja was a good start. It's got some cool action, and they do a decent job of concealing when it's Lee Van Cleef's stunt double. I like Lee Van Cleef, but personally, I would have preferred to see Shokasugi in the lead. I know this episode was short, but it's given me time to get an episode out while I'm working on some longer ones. I have one coming up that might be longer than my Black Hole episode. I think you're going to like it.